Atonement was directed by Joe Wright, who's also known for directing movies like Pride and Prejudice and Darkest Hour, and stars the likes of James McAvoy and Kira Knightley. After a 13-year-old girl has one of the most traumatizing days of her life, the boyfriend of her sister is wrongfully accused of a crime he did not commit. As another film I have not seen before, Atonement has been on my watch list for quite some time, not only because it has an intriguing premise and James McAvoy in the film, but also because it incorporates World War II, as well as the fact that I got nominated for several Oscars back in 2008. I didn't expect too much to come out of this movie. Someone I talked to before watching it said they did not like the movie, and I didn't know too much about it. I remember looking at the plot on IMDb a long while back, but then instantly forgot while watching the beginning of this movie what the film was about. So I went in this movie not expecting too much. I did not think it was going to be that good, but thankfully I was greatly surprised. Atonement is an excellent movie made by Joe Wright who has such a unique way of directing his films. I'll admit within the first 10 to 15 minutes of Atonement, I was a tad bit worried because there's a scene where you think they are utilizing symbolism, and I thought this movie was going to be very symbolic, it wasn't going to be interesting, not entertaining whatsoever. Thankfully, after that scene though, the movie doesn't go down that route much at all. It does use some symbolism, but symbolism that actually is meaningful, not symbolism that's there that comes off as metaphorical. I'm not a big fan of movies that are full on metaphorical, and this is not one of those movies which I was so happy about. The film instead decides to take a very artistic approach to its vision, and Joe Wright did a magnificent job directing this movie. Such a unique way of directing a film, and I've never seen a movie directed quite like this. Sometimes during a scene, he'll give you not just one, but two perspectives for characters in that moment, which I thought was really cool. I've never seen anything done like that before, and that kind of leads you into thinking a certain way about one character for the first half of the movie, you believe that this little 13-year-old girl is this traumatized, innocent little angel, and then towards the middle of the movie, and even in those scenes where we see the opposite perspective coming from her older sister and her sister's boyfriend, you start thinking a lot differently about her character, and she's not this traumatized little young angel anymore. I love how they chose to give us more than one perspective in some of these scenes because it tells you that not everything you see is what's really going on in that moment because if you're a 13 year old girl you might think one thing and the reality of the situation is what she's thinking is not at all true. So the theme of adolescent ignorance is absolutely taken seriously by director Joe Wright in Atonement. He makes it clear that when you're young, you're not going to understand the reality of every single situation that you're a part of, especially when you're looking from the outside perspective. In terms of visual choices, the film is artistically sound. Joe Wright tells a story visually without having dialogue through the use of symbolism. While watching Atonement, I felt like a picture was being painted before my my eyes. I also love the choice by Joe Wright to not give us the full story in every single scene. From time to time, you are given a false narrative about the story of Atonement, but eventually they do give you the true story, which I liked a lot because not everything is as clear cut as it originally seems, and then eventually Joe Wright will give us all of his cards and you see full on what this movie is trying to say, and for me, that hit me so hard. However, Atonement is not just a technical masterpiece. I found this movie highly entertaining from beginning to end. There weren't many moments where I was not gripped to the film's story, except for maybe the first 15 minutes where I felt like they were going to use a lot of symbolism, which was not the case. It has so many great themes to offer within its well-developed story, aside from the adolescent ignorance theme. Atonement talks a lot about forgiveness and coming close clean, reconciling even when it hurts, and the importance of being selfless for those you love. It's crazy because you don't totally know where this movie is going until the very end, and when the movie finally wraps up, you're left feeling kind of shocked. I did not expect the movie to go down the route it did with its ending, and it left me feeling heartbroken, but at the same time, I wanted to stand up and cheer because 
this film's ending was one of the best endings I've seen in a long time. It's not one of those blockbuster endings where there are a lot of explosions and action sequences. It's one of those endings that hits you hard right here. And for me, I connected so much with this film's ending. It reminded me so much of our world today and how someone can go as far as to ruin someone's life over something so minuscule. As someone who is very close to his family, this movie hit home on all levels and I can completely relate to so many elements to this film. Also, the acting. I did not mention that yet. Every single performance in Atonement is one of the best performances I've seen coming from each and every single one of these actors. I did my string of X-Men reviews not so long ago, and if you watch those videos, you know that I love James McAvoy, and I believe that Atonement has something to do with him landing the job of Professor X, because James McAvoy in this movie gives one of his all-time best performances, and the other actors knock it out of the park too. Kira Knightley serves as the perfect ying to James McAvoy's yang. She gave one of her best performances of all time in this movie. Scherzer Ronan, a young version of her she is kind of annoying you start hating her guts at some point in this film but she was really great as random as it seems both benedict cumberbatch and alfie allen do make small appearances in atonement they're not in the movie that much as i would have liked them to be but it's cool seeing them here especially because this was before they both became famous you know what's also pretty cool is how we get a precursor to the battle of dunkirk in atonement which in my opinion, I like more than what we get in the film Dunkirk that came out 10 years after this movie because it looks better. Even though there aren't any battle sequences here in Atonement, we still get an idea of what's going to happen to all these soldiers and that left me feeling shook. This being the second new film I watched for the first time this week, it's yet again another great watch and I am pleased to say that this is absolutely one of the best movies that came out back in 2007. It does have a few smaller problems but they are not big enough for me to drag this score down too much. Practically all of the main problems come from the film's opening. One of the main reasons why there is a stir among this family is because one of the main characters in the movie writes a love letter to one of the other main characters, but he also writes a letter that is rather, should I say, inappropriate and tells a little bit too much information that should not be told to this other character, and he is sending the letter to her, but the letter that he wrote that was inappropriate unfortunately gets in the hands of her instead of the love letter and to me it's like how could you be that dumb i understand that we are all human we make stupid mistakes sometimes but the fact that he allows this inappropriate letter to get in the hands of his love instead of the love letter I just don't understand how you can make such a stupid mistake. Along with that, the film includes various other moments in the beginning of the movie that cause Sher Saronin's character to think that James McAvoy's character is a molester, but later on in the film, you realize she did this because of one small thing. I just wonder why we had to have a string of scenes take place before the big scene that eventually pushes James McAvoy's character over the top, sending him to a place that nobody wants to go. I feel like you could have just avoided all of that, gotten right to the chase, and made this movie more interesting, but instead the beginning of this movie does take a little bit for us to get invested. Also, for some viewers, this film may be a bit too artsy, at least in the beginning of the movie. For myself, that is not the case because, technically speaking, this movie is a masterpiece and it is artistically perfect. Add that to a great score, excellent performances, an intriguing plot, as well as a film that hit me deep down. This is a deeply layered film, and it's a film that left me feeling a certain kind of way. Not many movies can do that. So I am giving Atonement a 92%. On all levels, this movie 100% deserved to get as many Oscar nominations as it did at the 2008 Oscars. I know some people aren't the biggest fan of this film. They'll think it's kind of boring. For myself, though, I did not think that was the case. This movie really hit home. But I want to hear what you guys think. Is Atonement a great movie? Is it a bad movie? Is it one of your favorites of all time? And for director Joe Wright, where does it rank? Let me down below in the comments section. As always, if you are new to my channel, click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.